Hello and my name is Robbie from Girl Bike Love. In this video we are going to be teaching you how to pick the correct spin bike for you. Let's go! So before we start it's really important to speak about the difference between a spin bike and an exercise bike. So a spin bike is made for spinning sessions, has a slightly more aggressive geometry, it comes with sportier components such as saddle and handlebars, and you get resistance which is friction and magnetic. An exercise bike is generally made with a much more upright riding position, the components are made more for comfort so you'll find the saddles much bigger and wider, and the resistance is normally just magnetic. The key difference between these two though is a spin bike is designed for you to be able to stand up and ride on and an exercise bike is designed for you not to do that. So if you're looking for the full spinning experience you are definitely going to want to be on a spin bike over an exercise bike. We highly recommend just having a look at a few exercise bikes and a few spin bikes so you can clearly tell the difference because many manufacturers mislabel these and a lot of people do make this mistake of buying an exercise bike when they really want a spin bike. So now for the fun bit. Here's where we're going to be telling you everything you need to know when it comes to buying a spin bike. We have 10 different topics to run through, so it is a lot of information. But don't worry, if you go to the top comment below, it's going to link to the Girl Bike Glove website where you're going to get a handy checklist. So you can literally enter all your information of what you're looking for and your budget, etc. and compare it against the bikes you're looking at. So the first thing to mention is budget. It is vital to establish how much you want to spend before looking for a spin bike. We often see people go in without a budget and they either buy something that's way too expensive and they regret it, or they buy something very cheap and end up having to upgrade it later. Think of a budget in mind and get as close as you can to that when buying a spin bike. So next we have size. So some spin bikes such as the Nordic Track S27i are very large bikes. And then you get bikes such as the Echelon EX3, which is fairly small. So before buying a bike, it's a really good idea to go and measure where you plan to put it. Take those measurements and compare them up against bikes that you're seriously considering. The last thing you need is to buy a bike and realise it doesn't fit in the place where you need it to. Not only do we have size, but we also have fit too. So if you're quite short or quite tall, it's a really good idea to just check the bikes you're seriously considering to make sure they can accommodate for your size. Another factor to consider is if you're looking for an interactive spin bike or a non-interactive spin bike. A really good example of an interactive spin bike would be a Peloton Bike Plus. Not only does it have that massive screen in front where you can go to live classes, but the instructor can even control the resistance for you to make sure that your workout is on point every time. A non-interactive spin bike is one which has really no connectivity and is just very basic and essential. The difference in price is huge, but an interactive spin bike is gonna give you a much better indoor cycling experience. So moving on from interactive and non-interactive spin bikes, we have connectivity. So connectivity typically comes in the form of a Bluetooth connection. We highly recommend doing this because it can really add so much value to your cycling experience. With a Bluetooth connection, you can use apps such as Peloton on a tablet, or you can even use a Zwift in some cases. I highly recommend getting a bike with a Bluetooth connection because if you don't, it does very much so limit you. Another thing to avoid is bikes with AMP Plus connections. AMP Plus is a way of connecting, but it only really is to heart rate monitors and very basic accessories. So if you can go for a bike with a Bluetooth connection, we highly advise it. They are a little bit more money, but it does open you up to just having a lot more fun. So next we have resistance. In your search for a spin bike, you're gonna come across two types of resistance magnetic and friction. So magnetic uses any currents to slow the bike down and is often referred to as a frictionless resistance system. 
It's incredibly quiet, incredibly smooth, and it's the way all companies are going now. Friction systems are a little bit outdated. It's where you have a wool pad that presses onto the flywheel to create the resistance to slow you down. Magnetic is generally much better. It's quieter, smoother, and you can really dial that resistance in with levels instead of using a friction system where you're kind of just guessing where roughly you're at. If you can get a magnetic one, but if you are limited, a friction one's still gonna do a pretty good job. So next we have front and rear facing flywheels. So this is something so many people overlook when it comes to getting a new spin bike, but it's so important. So a front facing flywheel typically makes the bike look a little bit more classic. It makes the bike shorter and that flywheel is always going to be in view, which is really important if you have children or pets running around while you're training. A rear facing flywheel gives the bike a real modern look. It makes it a little bit longer, but it does mean that flywheel is out of view. It really comes down to personal preference, but in my opinion, if you are training where there's going to be people running around and a dog on the loose, you might want to go to a front facing flywheel over a rear. So next we have brand. So in my career, I've been lucky enough to ride a lot of different bikes, some from some really well-known brands and others from brands that you might not have heard of before. In my experience, I've always found that brands that are very well known do give you a more quality product a lot of the time. Not only does a lot more research and development go into their bikes, but they seem to have better warranties and generally better customer service. This isn't always the case. There's always these up and coming brands that do offer more. They just haven't got the name behind them yet. But in general, if you can go for a better brand such as Peloton, Nordic Tract, Sunny Health and Fitness, Bowflex, Schwinn, any of these, you are going to get a really good product and some really good customer service behind you. So then we have bike style. So spin bikes come in all different styles. You have some real classic looking spin bikes, and then you've got some really modern space age looking spin bikes. I highly recommend getting a bike that you really like the style of. Not only are you gonna to want to ride it more, but it's gonna be living in your house with you. So you're probably gonna end up seeing it every day and you don't want it to be an eyesore. Even if you're spending a little bit more money on going something you really like the look of, it is worth it in the long run. So then you have warranty. Some companies will offer as little as 28 days and others will offer up to three years. So in my opinion, I wouldn't go for a bike with anything less than a year's warranty. You want to know that you've got that support in case anything goes wrong. Some companies use a different style of warranty, which is typically 10 years on the frame, three years on parts and one year on labor. They're also just as good. But anything less than a year, I personally wouldn't go anywhere near. So now you know exactly what you need to be thinking about when it comes to finding the perfect spin bike for you. We appreciate there is a lot of information and it can feel a little bit overload because there's so much to think about. Remember the top comment of this video is a link to the Girl Bike Love website where not only are you going to find this really handy chart, where you can fill in your own details and start comparing bikes against them. You're also going to get some great advice on the best accessories to have for a spin bike as well. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video today. If you've got any handy tips or advice, drop them in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the Girl Bike Love YouTube channel. Stay cool.